What is up everybody, it's Easy bringing you another Clash of Clans video. This is a clan war recap on our last war. Awesome war, great job by the guys. Got a bunch of different kinds of attacks in the video, so I wanted to bring this one to you. Uh, we're doing the dragon event right now, so we're going to start off with one of Creeper's attacks. This is a Dragaloon attack. Um, like most recap videos, I won't go through uh, every single video and give you a play-by-play -play on every single one, because I have to talk through most of it. <laughs> Got some cool news coming up about halfway through the video. Uh, get into that in a little while. And we even featured my base at the end getting attacked. Wanted to show that calamity at the end of this video. Uh, don't usually do that, so that's a rare little uh, rare look at my base. So that'll be cool. So anyway, starting off with the Dragaloon. Uh, we have the dragon the dragon event going on so right now dragons are pretty cheap uh, You can get 200 gems if you use them like 200 times. I don't know how many times. It's crazy though uh, So this a lot of people will be using dragons right now So I think it'll be a good look for everyone to see how one of the pros do it creeper is definitely one of the best in all of clash at using dragons You'll notice uh, even though it's already long since gone But one of the keys to using the dragon attack is using the lightning and the earthquakes. It's called zapquake and what he does so well is he conserves his spells by he'll pick on bases that don't have their layout done right and that have the air defenses too close together. So he'll be able to use one earthquake and one earthquake can can actually damage multiple buildings at one time if you didn't already notice that or know that. Uh, so he uses one earthquake spell, damages multiple air defenses and then he can use the two lightnings on each air defense. So instead of using two lightnings and an earthquake on one air defense, two lightnings and an earthquake on a second, you can use one earthquake on both and then four lightnings. That gives him that one last spell. And I think it's a half spell, but believe it or not, that's a huge advantage. Having one half spell left over is big. <clears throat> so anytime you can conserve a spell by, by using the earthquake on two air defenses at once, I would definitely say go for it. Now, uh, the lightning, uh, the zapquake, Using two Zapquakes on these bases is, uh, is a pretty dangerous affair because you're leaving yourself without many spells at all after that. We all know how big spells are in, in Clan Wars. So you have to really know what you're doing. Uh, and you have to know how to funnel the troops. You have to get your dragons to go inside the base because even if you take out two air defenses, if the dragons end up going around the outside and the air defenses lock onto dragons going around the outside instead of coming straight at them, then they will easily dismantle them and they'll they'll they'll, be, they'll kill them off easily. Uh, also, make sure you use enough balloons with these attacks. I see too many people use a dragon balloon attack and use like ten dragons and four balloons. And the four balloons are that's not enough balloons to, to three star a base regularly. Uh, you want to use probably eight to ten balloons. Uh, you really need the balloons that they are the ones doing a lot of damage on the defense only. Uh, um, yeah, on the defense only, on the air defenses, and the balloons being a defense only uh, troop, they can take out those air defenses and take out things like the archer towers ahead of time. Okay, so we've got a couple of attacks in a row from from little boss. Uh, she is an, an elite attacker, one of the greatest attackers in the clan. Uh, I, I love saying this, but she literally studies the base for two to three hours before every attack, and that may seem excessive, but her attack percentage is probably in the mid 90s probably 94 95 percent as far as getting three stars per attack That's just phenomenal, and this is her mini account and also notice that the hero levels We're at 21 on both the, the king and the queen. This is her second account So there's a lot of patience involved in upgrading these uh, these heroes before you move to town hall 10 So these all these things just add up to uh, a, a strong attack um, This base is a very popular base um, I had to attack this base with one of my Town Hall 9's and I think it took me 12 times in the practice realm to in the, in the friendly challenge before I actually got it down and she did this on the first try so this is a tricky base you notice that she's using the surgical deployment on the balloons so instead of putting in a big line of balloons and trying to, to spell them over to where you want them to go um, she's putting them in two or three at a time all of them on key defenses and I mean look how many balloons she has left it, this was a this was a slaughter of an attack just an, another great great attack by a little boss 
Uh, next attack coming up, same attack strategy, just a, a much different type of base. And I and just wait till you see what she does in the next one. That's it's great. It's always good to have people that want that want to study the base. They want to um, do the best for the clan. There's I, I've noticed because I've been you know we have two clans and I've been in a bunch of other clans. I see way too much haste attacking. In other words, they don't study anything. They just come on. They'll request troops. They attack and they disappear. And there's no, you know, when they do well, they may take a compliment or two. But there's really no communication back and forth. There's no camaraderie. That's not how. That's not really the way this is designed to play. You you want to be able to give yourself at least a half hour. I know we're all busy, but usually you can you can dedicate a half an hour per attack. So um, you know, dedicate a half hour. Come on, talk to everyone. Plan out your attack, study the base, if there's replays, make sure you watch the replays, and then go out and put out your best attack. Now this base here, the base she's attacking has a major fundamental problem with it. And this is a mistake that I see a lot of people make. They put all four air defenses pretty much in the core of the base. And I know a lot of people think, okay, I'm trying to protect it against air, so I'm going to put all the air defenses in the middle. Problem is, is that most players can pierce their army into the core of the base. So, because they didn't separate the air defenses at all, once she got to the core, all the air defenses are gone. And it was just a, it was a lot easier for her to, to, to manage the rest of the attack because you just had to pierce into the core, funnel the troops into the core, all the air defenses are gone. And now, if you look around, there's just nothing left. Uh, the, if they had put those air defenses and, and put maybe one air defense in, you know, split the base into four parts, and split them up and put one air defense in each of the four parts that would have been much more difficult for her to be able to come in there and just wipe it out uh, she is using probably one of the strongest attacks in Town Hall 9 it's, it's the Gola Loom and that's Gaul you start off with Golems and Wizards and the Kill Squad for those of you who don't know what a Kill Squad is um, they, a Kill Squad is a group of troops that will use to try to take out specific objectives and in this case the Kill Squad goes in and tries to take out uh, one or two of the air defenses once those air defenses are down, then it's much easier for the air portion of the raid to come in and do their work. And ironically, that is just the opposite of what I gave as advice for so long. I would tell people, don't ever mix the air and the ground troops together. And my logic was that if you use all air troops, well, then none of their ground defense can be effective at all. Because you're using all air troops, so none of the ground defenses can shoot at them. And that logic made a lot of sense, but what I've found is by using ground troops to pierce through the defense and take out those air defenses. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, using the ground troops in, in the form of a kill squad to, to pierce in there and take out the, the air defenses makes it a lot easier on the air portion of the raid. So this is a niche now. New player has two accounts, one in each of our, our clans. Uh, just a great contributor already. Uh, now what he does, he, he was asked to do a drop down attack and I know a lot of people don't like to watch these dip attacks because they think uh, a Town Hall 9 is automatically supposed to do 3 star Town Hall 8 and maybe maybe so but these attacks are so important in Clan Wars that I'd, I'd like to try to show one every video. In this case here, he used the Goho attack and because he is a Town Hall 9 he uses, those, he uses uh, several bridges to go around the outside of the base. And what he did is he deployed them at the end of the attack to make sure they wouldn't go inside the base. And by waiting about 30 seconds to deploy the witches, he didn't have to use healers on them. So he was able to save a ton of camp space by not having to use healers on the witches. And they're, they're able to go around the outside of the base and just easily take out all these trash buildings along the outside. And what that did is ensure the, that the, the attack wouldn't go long. He also did a really good job on his spell usage. If you notice, he never put the heal spells right on top of the hog riders. If you're trying to use hog riders, you need to use heal spells with them, but you don't want to put the heal right on top of the hog riders. You want to lead the hogs, kind of like a quarterback would lead the receiver in football. If he throws it right to the receiver, by the time the receiver runs his route, it's the balls behind him. And it's the same in Clash. If you put the, the heal spell directly on the hogs, they will just run right out of it instead of running into it by if you lead them with it. So that's what you want to do. You want to lead these hog riders with the heal spells. Next attack's from Steve. He's a co-leader in the clan. Been in the clan for literally years. Um, he uses the flex attack. Flex happens to be a good friend of Steve's. And 
they have perfected this attack and Steve is one of the masters of this attack in our clan uh, the flex attack if you want to see more on this attack we have so much content on this attack it's all over our channel it's all over the website uh, let me mention the website real quick we have a huge clash of clans guide it's got everything you can imagine clash of clans it's it's at www.clashmadeeasy.com um, you'll see it at the end that there'll be some information for it at the end you'll be able to click to it I don't know if you can click to it anymore because YouTube's changed their policy thank you guys uh, anyway uh, get the attack all over the website all over the rest of the YouTube channel go check it out it's an attack that not many people have heard of it's made it was made up in our clan uh, it starts off with a bowler walk and a queen walk both on one side of the base but on opposite corners and they are intended to uh, in, uh, for those of you who don't know what a walk is uh, that's when you use these ranged troops and uh, you know in the case of the Queen she's range she has a long range on her on her uh, that crossbow she carries so you use her with three healers behind her two or three we like to use three and then you use the bowlers another great range troop with three healers behind them they'll start off in the two corners and then they'll start walking around the outside of the base and you don't want them to go into the base so you'll put uh, the rest of your troops along the wall right in the middle of them and you will clear out that wall real quick push them into the base and I'm already way past the attack <laughs> that is the story of my life right there guys okay this next one this is the the slap attack Sally does uh, a, a different version of this because she's not going to use a bunch of healers she's actually going to use the healers on the Queen only and uh, she's pushing all the all the troops right in the dead center of the core and she does that by clearing out the whole wall by putting in a line of bowlers and then a line of wizards right behind them and it may seem like a kind of spammy attack and I've said this a bunch of times but there is a really good advantage there's a great advantage for using some of these attack strategies because there's not a lot that can go wrong for her right now all that she has to do is keep her eyes on the heroes make sure she doesn't lose the abilities and then watch carefully and, and, and use the spells in the right place and the, the the troop combinations are such a good troop combination they work so well with each other that they kind of manage themselves so unlike the these highly skilled attacks like the like the goho or the laloon that yes they are great attacks but because the um, the defense only troops are so squishy you have to be really careful on how you deploy them and a lot can go wrong so these these kind of mass attacks like the flex or like the slap they are uh, much more dependable and that's why you'll see a lot of your top players use them uh, and you know I kind of have to explain that every time because I hear a lot of people kind of bad talk these mass attacks and I was never a big advocate of like the mass witch or the mass minor attacks I, I, I'm not really into putting 42 troops of uh, 42 of the same troop in and then just let them go at it uh, you know that's not really as skilled as it could be but this is a little different because these these attacks took a long time to to build and a long time to learn how to use and a long time to get the troops right to get the troop count right learn what goes with what and how to use it and now you know it's kind of a beautiful thing now because it's, it, it, it's a, a really effective and it's fairly simple to use now but there was a lot of legwork getting this attack to where it is I guess that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> now here is uh, flex himself also using the flex attack so if you're new to the channel he is the one who created this attack this attacks all over the place uh, matter of fact, forgot to say, I was going to say this earlier, but uh, we got an article. The first, we actually have two articles. The first article is the difference between the home village and the war base. Um, it is now being run in All Clash. All Clash is a big Clash of Clans website, probably the biggest one out there outside of Clash itself. Um, so go check it out. Uh, it's a it was a article that I wrote probably several weeks ago. Spent a lot of time on the research and development of the article, so it's pretty in depth. It is not short. Anyone who knows me knows that I am long winded, so it's not short. But it's really good if you're a newer player or you're struggling with your base designs. There's a lot of things in there that you may not have thought of that. I've been giving advice in this for a long time and not just giving but I've been getting advice for on how to build bases for a long time so maybe I've thought of something that you haven't so go check it out again that's all that's at allclash.com and you'll see it's the it's the home village versus war base uh, now the next we have another article coming through all clash as well and it is on the flex attack so this attack is about to go it's about to get up in the mainstream of, of Clash because a lot of people go to All Clash. They, they, it's a big update um, website, so 
especially during update times they have a lot of traffic on and off the site so you are about to see a lot more people use this attack this is uh, something that we've been using for two years or more um, so go check that out I, I, it's not out yeah sorry go check out something that's not there yet <laughs> that's how dumb I am sometimes guys Anyway, that will be coming out soon. Um, I'll make sure every, all of our people know. And uh, if you're subscribed to our website or subscribed to the channel, then you will hear about that as soon as it comes out. Speaking of that, subscribe to the channel. Uh, building up our channel, it takes a long time. You know, I'm new to YouTube. I've, as a matter of fact, I didn't use any social media at all. I'm old. You can tell by my old voice. But I uh, didn't use any social media at all. All of a sudden, I get into Clash of Clans. I started using the social media. Have a YouTube channel. Been working on it for almost a year now. And uh, got a ton of, of great people. Great response. I'm, I'm really proud of what we've done. And I'm really, really thankful for everyone that's been so supportive of us. So, subscribe to the channel. We put a ton of information out. We're doing two videos today. Uh, so, as I'm talking through this, let's give a little background of why I'm showing my base on YouTube. <laughs> This war came down to the last star. They actually, their number one, actually, I think he had two accounts, number one and number two. Uh, did great on his second account. Got to where he needed five stars. He had to attack my base, with number two, and then Bulldog's base, a, a Max Town Hall 11, as number one. Now, this, this man has 1,600 war stars. So, he is no rookie. He is not new to these, these attacks. But what happens is... He gets to the base, he dismantles the base really well, and then he gets to the Tesla farm. And the Tesla farm completely annihilates the, king, the queen, takes out the queen in the core. And once that, once that queen is gone, the, the attack is pretty much uh, spoiled for him. I know this is going to be a very high, um, high percentage 2 star, but he was counting on a 3 star on this base. And then counting on getting a 2 star on Bulldog's base because it's much harder to get a, a 3 star on a Max Town Hall 11. But what I wanted to show you is notice where the notice where the Tesla farm is. Um, a lot of anti three star bases, you'll have your your town hall outside the walls on one side, and then you'll have the the Tesla farm outside of the walls on the other side. I don't know if I just said that right. I can't remember. Uh, I'll say it again though. You'll have your town hall outside the walls on one side, and you'll have the Tesla walls on the opposite side. The Tesla farm, Jesus, on the other side of the base outside the walls. But if you notice where I put the Teslas, they are outside the range of any of those troops that can shoot over the walls. That's a really big advantage for your base on defense. So, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I, I enjoyed making it. Sub to the channel, guys. Like the video if you liked the video. Share it. Do all those nice things. Do, do easy a favor. Come back and see me. I got another video coming out. So, till next time, it's been easy. Take care, everyone.